you, when you get that support, you realize like, oh wow, something did come out of this. People are starting to take notice of what's going on um, directly because we have 18, 19, 20 year old students um, raising a ruckus. Well, the end of every Erasmus year, the class goes on immersion trip and we went to Cambodia because there is a big issue of um, sex tourism, sex trafficking. A lot of uh, women come out of Southeast Asia, especially Thailand and Cambodia as well. Cambodia was amazing. Um, we were there for just two weeks. We met with a lot of organizations that are trying um, to develop the country and um, make it a higher standard of living. A majority of the places we went to were run by the people of Cambodia. So there are like people, there are like um, homeless shelters that were run by the Cambodians. There, were, there was like, I remember a distinct place uh, that was teaching kids about recycling at a really early age. And also we met with um, some women's help agencies who um, help people or women after they get out of sex, sex slavery. So we went to, you know, trash dumps, slums, um, orphanages, children's hospitals, school for the blind and deaf, a program that helps people who have been deported back to Cambodia from the United States, fishing villages, I guess street children restaurant hospitals, I and mean, we just saw a lot. I saw the most beautiful in people, but I also saw the most ugly in people. The ship is crashing down. I study a hand they rightly claim can't confiscate her mighty way. Cambodia, it was good to see where these girls come from because we've been dealing with it from um, from the United States side. So when you see people in those situ like in that economic situation with no other opportunities, like I can understand why they would want to leave and like, okay, yeah, I'll go with you to some other country to work, you know. And I, you can just understand the vulnerability of them and why they would succumb to the trafficking rings. I think like for the rest of my life it's gonna sink in like what I learned there and like what I saw there. It was it was amazing. They took what they found and they gave it to the DA's office in San Francisco, who were absolutely blown away that university students had done this work. And told them, you know, we have this evidence, you know, what are you gonna do about it? The police team felt they didn't have the protocols to take action and that this was, they would first of all have to do their own investigation. But that didn't really happen because there weren't actually any laws in place um, in order to provide like a base for them to do that. And so, um, I mean, that was really frustrating that nothing really was done. And so they, they didn't do anything about it, I mean, even though the evidence was there. They failed us. And that's what it is. The politicians and the police failed the students, that's how I view it. And, but instead of just saying, darn, <laughs> that was great, we'll move on. It's, okay, well, what do we do now? 
So they came up with an alternative way. If the police wouldn't shut them down for a criminal activity, we could shut them down through city regulation. So this next group of Erasmus students are doing just that. They're trying to figure out what is the next step in, f in light of the police kind of rejecting the previous year's research. So um, what are they doing? They're breaking down into groups as well. This year we're working with IRS, we're working with the district attorney's office. We're coming up with innovative strategies to undermine trafficking rings that go beyond simply whether or not we can find someone in a criminal court. When we think about shutting down a trafficking site, we think very literally as a criminal activity. But because that's not been effective, what we're looking at is maybe there's other ways through tax or money laundering or maybe through a violation of city code. Why don't we explore that this semester? I am one of the three researchers working with Erasmus Project this year. Um, the first part of the semester was really focused on wading through all the information that the researchers got from last year. We had a lot of um, papers and interviews and transcriptions to go through so that we could be up to date with all the information that they had gathered for us. Um, this semester we are really working on um, taking that education and turning it into action. I focus on the South Bay and what that means is we've been working with a sister from the Salvadorian Sisters and we're, um, we've been trying to organize and establish a shelter in South Bay for victims of human trafficking. Um, we are the transgender mapping project for Erasmus and what that consists of is we try to find any type of suspicious trafficking that might happen in the transgender community. I do a lot of networking. Um, I try to interact with the people from last year's Erasmus to find out and fill in the gaps for us to pick up where they left off for our work this year. We worked with Dave Batstone and one of his colleagues, Justin, to do an investigation. Um, with NBC and we went inside or they went inside one of the massage parlors in Union Square um, to do some surveillance on the massage parlor and so that was actually put together and aired on NBC which was really exciting it was um, absolutely ridiculous and so powerful to be outside the massage parlor and looking up and um, it was just sheets across the windows and it was right upstairs from a Paul Frank store um, just in the center of the commercial um, area of San Francisco and yet there were girls up there who had no idea that they were in Union Square and um, it was really powerful. It was um, really important for me to actually be there and like realize how close we are to each other and that they're all over the city. And I also try to organize our fundraising work so we can go on our trip to Thailand. Going there for us is, is a culmination of what we've learned and, and what that is, is matching faces with the names we've read, uh, matching stories, like real stories, with the, the stories we're told in books and, and the research we've done. I think it's, it's about putting um, actual emotions to what we've been working with. Going on this trip will change us and impact us, and that's something that we'll hold on to for a long time and we'll be able to share with other people and it's opening up that dialogue about trafficking that is really what in the long term is going to help stop it. I think the thing that I'm extremely excited for is living with kids ages 2 to 18 who um, were rescued from trafficking so that's just going to be I think one of the most powerful experiences ever. We could just you know take this so much further than we even thought possible. I remember someone saying that once you talk to a victim of human trafficking, you are never the same. And, and I think we're all looking for that experience, and the only way we can get it is by talking to them. I sometimes don't remember how big this is. You know, a lot of times you just think of it as like, you know, a class that you're putting in a lot, this, you know, work to that's making a difference, but you don't think about the scale that it's on, you know, you don't think that you're the first university that's declared itself abolitionist, you know. I'm quite honored, actually, to be part of this. It makes me feel like I can make a difference while I'm still getting my education instead of waiting till after.